Hello again and welcome back to the Scottish Photobiology Unit's YouTube channel. My name's Ewan and I'm going to be presenting on photodermatology and specifically on photosensitivity. This presentation is adapted from a public lecture that I gave in Liverpool. If you enjoy this video, please do remember to give us a thumbs up and if you want to hear more about photo dermatology and photobiology research and education, do remember to subscribe to our channel as well. Before we go into the presentation, I'd like to start with a short visualisation exercise. What I'd like you to do is picture in your mind your favourite place to be on a warm, sunny summer's day. Close your eyes if you like and hold that image in your mind. Think about where you are and feel that lovely warmth coming from the sun. There's a perfectly clear blue sky. Now, while you're in that place, imagine that that lovely heat is getting hotter and it's quickly moving from becoming comforting to actually becoming uncomfortable and then from uncomfortable to painful a real burning pain a, a burning pain so intense that it makes you want to scream it feels like you're being stabbed with needles all over your skin on your arms and your in your face your neck and you you have to get out the sun get away from the source of that pain and so you run indoors but you're not free of the pain. It continues and it will continue for the next two days. Imagine never being able to return to that special, beautiful place because the sun causes you so much pain. And now I want you to think about your daily life and how would your life change if you had to avoid sunlight? Not just in the summer, but also in the winter and not just outdoors, but inside too. And I'd like you to keep that visualization in your mind and, and be thinking about it as we go through the rest of this presentation. The title of the presentation is Photodermatology. So what is photodermatology? Well, it's the study of the light interaction with skin and our unit is interested wherever the two coincide, be that in diagnosis, in therapy, or even in public health. We cover a wide range of different subject areas, um, but the main ones I've shown on the slide here. The first of these is the diagnosis and management of individuals who are unusually sensitive to light. And that's the topic that I'll be focusing on today. The second area is the use of ultraviolet light for phototherapy to treat conditions such as psoriasis. Thirdly, there's photodynamic therapy, which is for the treatment of superficial skin cancers and precancerous lesions. And a lot of our physics and clinical research is in that topic. Finally, then we also undertake laser therapy for treating pigmented lesions and for hair and tattoo removal as well. Some of our laser treatments are available on the NHS, but we also run a private clinic in the evenings, which helps us then fund research and service development. So as I've said, I'm going to focus on photosensitivity in this presentation, but do check out our YouTube channels for other videos on photodynamic therapy as well. With the area of photosensitivity, what I'd like to do is, is give you a bit of clinical information about the conditions that we diagnose and then explain where the medical physics aspect um, of this comes in. The visualisation that we went through at the beginning was describing photosensitivity and some of the symptoms that can be experienced by, by individuals who are particularly sensitive to light. It's our job at the photobiology unit to diagnose these conditions and because there is often no cure we also help people manage their condition as well. Photosensitivity is a reaction in the skin 
caused by light, which in the majority of cases will result in visible symptoms appearing on the light exposed sites of the skin. There are some circumstances when the reaction that occurs in the skin does not produce visible symptoms, but instead produces an intense pain. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, being severely photosensitive can have a huge impact on the quality of life for an individual. There are a number of different reasons that someone can be photosensitive. For many of the conditions, we just don't know what the underlying mechanism is. Conditions such as solar urticaria, for example. And these conditions are called idiopathic photosensitivity. In other conditions, there's a genetic link, such as erythropoietic protoporphyria, or xeroderma pigmentosum, which is also known as XP. In XP, the DNA can't repair itself following exposure to UV. And as a result, many of these children get their first skin cancers before the age of 10. Photosensitivity can also be acquired, for example, in Perferia cutanea tarda, known as PCT. Most commonly, PCT is the result of poor liver function, uh, and poor liver function can be caused by many different factors. Uh, probably the most common, which we see, uh, is the result of alcohol. Finally then, photosensitivity can be caused by chemicals or drugs, both natural substances and man-made. Man Natural known photosensitizers include St John's wort, whereas known synthetic photosensitizers include the quinine, thiazide diuretics, frutamide and fluoroquinolone. So you can see that there are a lot of different causes that make individuals sensitive to light. It can be very difficult to diagnose photosensitivity and often it's several years after the onset of symptoms before individuals make it to our service. Now, up until this point, I've used the term light quite generically, but it's actually really important to drill down into what I mean by light and to be more prescriptive. And this is where the medical physics part of our work comes in. So to explore what I mean by light, Let's look at the biggest light source we have, which causes all of these problems uh, for people who are photosensitive. So, of course, uh, I'm talking about the sun. The sun emits electromagnetic radiation photons, which are little packets of energy that travel through our atmosphere and interact with our bodies, with our skin and with our eyes. Now, to our eyes, the photons from the sun produce the sensation of white light. But actually this white light is the result of combining multiple photons with different wavelengths. For the photons that our eyes can see, the so-called visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum, you can kind of think of wavelength as colour. So violet is 400 nanometers, where a nanometer is one billionth of a metre. And if we take a wavelength that's maybe longer, say almost double at around 750 nanometers, our eyes would see that photon as a deep red color. By combining multiple visible wavelengths, visible photons together, that can make the white light. But that just describes the visible part of the sun's spectrum, the part that we can see. There's also an area with shorter wavelengths than violet that our eyes can't see, which we call the ultraviolet. The ultraviolet is responsible for sunburn, for skin cancer, uh, but also has beneficial effects, such as the production of vitamin D. Now, it's actually the ultraviolet radiation that most photosensitive individuals are sensitive to. Although in rare cases, some people are sensitive to the violet and blue light as well. Everything we do in our day-to-day -day lives relies on light. So being sensitive to light has a major impact on quality of life. Now that we've better defined light as electromagnetic radiation, which we call ultraviolet, visible um, or infrared, the next question is then, how do we work out if someone is sensitive to light and which section of the light are they sensitive to? Well, we do that with a technique called phototesting. 
With photo testing, we expose an individual's skin to different wavelengths of light. And normally we use their back uh, because the back is a nice big surface area to work with. And also it tends to be quite sensitive. It hasn't been desensitized through regular exposure to sunlight. So we expose an individual's back to lots of different wavelengths of light. And at each wavelength, we deliver an increasing quantity of light. Where we have exposed the skin, we then look to see if the skin has reacted, if there is any redness or swelling. And we look immediately after exposure, seven hours later, and we look 24 hours later. Now we know what quantity of light a particular type of skin should react to. So if one individual reacts at lower quantities than this, that will suggest that they are photosensitive. The way we deliver that light is with an irradiation monochromator. This machine takes white light, which includes ultraviolet and visible radiation, and splits it up into individual wavelengths. And does that by changing the angle of the diffraction grating inside the monochromator. It is then sent out of the system, down a long tube, which then gets shone onto the patient's skin. Now in our service, all of the photo testing and light exposure on patients is performed by clinical technologists. Clinical technologists professionally are all fall within medical physics. They all have a scientific background, although it's not necessarily in physics. Our clinical technologists are the people who interact most with our patients. They perform all of our procedures, not just light-based procedures, but also things like taking bloods or preparing the skin for treatment. It might be a profession that you've not heard of before, but it is an excellent example of the combination of both science and the clinical medical aspects as well. The reason we need staff with that scientific background is that we need them to have an in-depth understanding of how the equipment works so that they can be confident in the quality of light that's being delivered to the patient. And this is really the key point when it comes to the role of medical physics in photodermatology. Not just the photo testing, but actually in all of the diagnostic and therapeutic uses of light. We must accurately know the quantity of light being delivered in order to have confidence that the diagnosis will be accurate, that the therapy will be effective and that we won't cause any harm. I often describe medical physics in this area as being like a pharmacist. Medical physics dispenses known quantities of light. So for example, when you take a 500 milligram paracetamol, you know the quantity of active drug is accurate. If it were not, consequences could be terrible. And the same goes for light. If we give too much light during a therapy, we could burn the skin, even cause blistering. If we give too little, then we're not going to treat the disease. And if we don't know how much light we are delivering during photo testing, then how will we be able to compare it to a reference range and diagnose the individual's condition? So the medical physics is there to ensure accurate delivery of light for safety and for efficacy. The way we do that is by determining dose of light that the individual receives. That's the quantity of light. Although the proper term is actually radiant exposure, but we commonly refer to it as dose. And it is the energy per unit area that is falling on a surface, where in this circumstance, the surface is the skin. Now the dose is equal to the irradiance, which is the power per unit area falling on the skin, multiplied by the exposure time. In medical physics, we spend a lot of our time measuring irradiance and ensuring that our measurements are accurate so that the dose that we deliver is also accurate. To summarize then, photosensitivity is when someone has an, an unusual sensitivity to light. A reaction takes place between light and their skin, which induces one or more symptoms, such as an exaggerated sunburn or pain. 
it can have a huge impact on the quality of life of the sufferer, limiting their interaction outdoors and even requiring special adaptations to their workplace, their home or their school. And in medical physics, it's our job to ensure the efficacy and safety during the diagnostic process by accurately knowing the dose of light that we deliver to the skin. So thank you very much for listening today. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Take care.